Hey guys, it's May May, and if you're expecting a part two of the um, composition book, it's coming, but I'm taking a break today because I needed a couple of graduation cards. These are some I made last year. You'll recognize these. There's videos on my channel, and I will link them in the description below. These are a bunch of mortar boards being tossed into the air. Love this one. So I will link this um, card tutorial in the description, and this one I did last year as well, and I will be sure to link this videos um, tutorial in the description as well. This one is used for demo in our shop and so I thought I would bring these in to show you guys. So both of those are linked in. Now for us today I decided I wanted to try something different. You guys love 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 the pop and twist card. You guys love how that looks. So I thought we would do a pop and twist for graduation. Okay, so I'm going to bring the pieces in and show you the sizes you're going to need before we get started. I think this will help. And so I'm just going to lay these out really quick. So this is going to be the look of a mortar board. If you don't know, that's what the hat, the graduation hat is called. It's going to be that look, and it's going to have a pop and twist mechanism on the inside. So this card piece here is eight by four. So you'll need a piece like that. This piece is then three and three quarters by three and three quarters, and that's gonna be our graduation hat, okay? The inside, the pop and twist mechanism, I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do a pop and twist. You're not gonna believe how easy this is. This piece is, I better measure, because I've already forgotten. <laughs> this piece is one and three fourths by seven, so you're gonna need one of those, and then this piece is also one and three fourths by seven, and that'll be on the inside, and it'll go on top of that. That'll be the piece that opens. Then I've done three, I mean, four one inch circles, and four one and three quarter by one and three quarter glitter squares. Nope, one and a half by one and a half. I wanted to check that. One and a half by one and a half glitter squares. I wanted to show you all the pieces we're gonna need first because that way if you wanted to pause the video and go grab all your pieces, then we could assemble together. All right, measurements will be in the description and the blog post that I'm going to be linking below. And this, we will start prepping. So we're gonna need our scoreboard. Got one right here. And this is our card base. So what I need to do here is I need to score this in half. So it's, I put the eight inches into my scoreboard. I'm gonna score it at four. So I'm just gonna run this down. I'm using Brutus Monroe um, card sock. This is from the trio pack that he and I did together. The one that has the white, the lunch bag. Oh, I should say the alabaster, the lunch bag, and the raven. That's what this is from. So that is the card stock. So I'm gonna crease this down nice and tight, just like so. And so that is our base all done. I'm still gonna need the scoreboard. I forgot, so let's put it back over here. Now we're going to prep the mechanism. Now I have a lot of pop and twist videos. I'm gonna link them in the description for you as well. And they are made differently. This one we're gonna make using just this strip and it's gonna be the easiest thing you've ever done, okay? So this piece is seven inches long. Half of seven is three and a half. So I'm gonna score this in half at three and a half. Now I'm telling you this because you'll be able to make this mechanism in different sizes depending on how big you need it just by knowing this. Score this piece in half, okay? Then I'm gonna score it in half long ways. So it's one and three fourths wide, which means I need to score it at seven eighths. That is the half inch mark here. So half inch mark. Now you notice that I'm scoring really well. I need to be able to see my score marks on both sides very clearly. And this one, I think I need to do one more time because we're going to be using those score marks to help us make the mechanism. This is how easy it is. This, seriously, the easiest thing. I don't know why I didn't figure this out before. Okay. The cross mark in the middle, okay, where those guys cross over, I don't think you can see that very well. I'm going to draw this in. Okay, so this is the same piece that I just scored in my scoreboard right here, but this time I've drawn the score marks for you to see them. So there and the back, because we're gonna be using them both. Now when you score them, you won't have to do these marks because you'll be able to see in person. All right, I'm going to take my bone folder. I showed you this before. It'll help us get this cross section really tight. Here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna fold this leg over, okay, until this score line lines up with this score line right here. So I'm gonna bring this score line to this score line. And on the back side, I'm gonna bring this score line to this score line. You'll see what I mean. So I'm gonna fold this over and I'm just gonna loosely do it until I get that lined up. So you see how I've got that lined up right there? And I'm not gonna do a whole lot of pressing yet because what I wanna do is flip this guy over and make sure this line is lined up as well. And it needs to twist just a tiny bit. 
and now I'm going to crease this down. Now, like I said, I'm using a very thick cardstock. You can use something thinner. You don't have to use anything this thick. It's just this is the white that I like to use. So there's my first cross mark. Okay, now I need to do the same thing on the other side. And the reason I put this in here is to help me get a nice crisp center. That's why I put my bone folder in there like that. And then look, I'm gonna line this line up here. And before I crease this down, I'm gonna flip this over and make sure that this line is lined up. And now it is. And now I can crease, crease, crease this guy. Just like this. Okay, so this now becomes our mechanism. The only thing else we need to do is crease that center line. And we already scored it. You'll be able to see it whenever you do this at home. So I crease that center line, okay? And now these arms are gonna come forward, these side arms, okay? We're gonna put a little pressure on like this. They're gonna come forward, see how this is doing? And that becomes our pop and twist mechanism. That's all we really need. All that, you know, last time I did this, I did the full sheet that pops up and all that. This is all you need to make the mechanism pop and twist on the inside. All right, let me show you that uh, assembled. So I'm gonna do mine really quick since I haven't done it. I'm gonna go ahead and fold that middle crease just real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna do this again, but you can't see the score marks, remember? But I can, I can see them. I'm gonna line my score marks up. So I'm lining that guy up right there. And before I press it down, I'm gonna flip it over and make sure this side is lined up and I needed to twist it the tiniest little bit. Now I can crease it. Okay, so now I can do it over here the same way. And I'm just gonna line up the score mark there, flip it over and line up my score mark over here. I really needed to twist that one. Okay, now I can crease. Nice and tight on this mechanism. You want it to move freely, okay? So now what we'll do is we'll press the center creases up and bring this together like so. Now I like to go ahead and work this guy together one more time because we might need to train the paper a little bit. We might get a little too much buckling or whatever. You just want this to lay nice and flat, okay? Now while I have this like this, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna take my scissors. This is not necessary, but I kinda like it. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut the slightest angle from one corner to the top of the mechanism. I'm gonna lay this down so you can see what I've done, okay? So from here to here, I just cut the slightest angle. I'm just taking some of that bulk out. I don't need it. It's just kind of bulky, so I'm just gonna trim some away. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you're not gonna see it, it's gonna be hidden. So this now becomes the mechanism that goes on the inside of my card. It is so easy. Hardly any measuring, don't worry about that. It doesn't even matter. Hardly any measuring or anything. So now if we go back to our card piece here, if you want to go ahead and map the inside of this, you can. I'm not going to yet. This piece is gonna live right here and become my pop and twist uh, mechanism. And let me show you how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna lay it in here just like this, okay? And I'm gonna put it right to the fold, but not over the fold. I do not wanna cross over the fold. So I'm making sure my card will still fold where I've got it, okay? And then I'm just gonna take my glue. You can use sticky tape for this. I'm just gonna take my glue and I'm gonna glue this piece down just like so, okay? Grab that like so. Then I'm gonna flip it over and lift it up. I'm gonna do it again here. So if you've made the other pop and twist cards and you've mastered that, great. You can do it the same way as those other ones. Just change your measurements down a little bit. But if you think this is an easier method, and I think it might be, <clears throat> I think it's I think it's at least less paper, right? Okay, so I'm gonna let that crease in and now watch, here's what happens. Boom, it works perfectly. Now I will say that I don't feel like I can open the card as wide with this mechanism, but that's okay because all you want it to do is pop out like this, right? Super cool. All right, and then I'm gonna crease this down just a little bit more. Now let's work on the tassel for the top of the um, cards. I'm gonna put that aside there. I have another cheater thing for you we're gonna do, okay? I've made tassels before. Matter of fact, in this card, I'm pretty sure I give you a full tutorial how to make this one. I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure you have a, a full tutorial on that one. But I'm gonna show you another one. All right, so I'm gonna take a length. Oh, look, that piece was already cut off. So I'm gonna take a length of Baker's Twine. All right, and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape this down to my work surface, just on either side, loosely. Just tape it, no biggie, something like that. Okay, 
So I also have cut six pieces of Baker's twine. Now this twine is four inches long because I want a two inch tassel because I'm gonna fold it in half, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this piece up that I taped down and I'm gonna pull this down halfway, okay? You see that? And then I'm just gonna fold this over that piece. Now that piece up there is way too long. I just used it to show you because it was already cut. I didn't have to cut anymore. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take some of the piece off the end because it's way too long. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this under all of this. So lift that up, slide it under, and bring it up to where you want your tassel to be tied into a knot. And I'm gonna tie this around it, just like so. And I might slide that up a little bit more, but it's a pretty, pretty good spot, and tie it pretty tight and I'm gonna knot it. You could have given yourself more length than I did. I just was trying to save some of that Baker's twine I had up there. So tie it super tight. Then I'm gonna cut this away. I don't need these little extra pieces. So I'm gonna cut that little piece away. This is just the piece that I knotted. I'm gonna leave the other, you can't even see it. All right, now I'm gonna untape it and I'm gonna lift this up. So here's my little tassel down here, okay? And I can adjust it, because I didn't tie it too super tight. I can adjust everything and then trim it off. And then I'm just gonna tie this at the top to make the tassel. But before I tie it, because of the way I'm, if you if you were just making a little tiny tassel, you just tie it and be done right here. Tie a little knot up here and you're done. But since I'm gonna put this into my card, I'm gonna wait to tie that knot. Now what I'm gonna do is trim the ends even. And if you're really, really particular about that and you take your time, you might not even have to do that. But look, now I have this little tiny tassel that's going to live on my little cap. Easy too, right? I didn't have to have anything for it. All right, here's what I wanna do. With my cap, I want to poke a hole in the middle, okay? So what I'm gonna do is find the center of my piece. I showed you guys this before with this ruler, how you can find the center using the zero side. So what I'm gonna do is come about here. You can straighten it out on your work surface too. Come right here and I'm gonna find the center by lining up my ruler the same distance to this side that it is to this side and I'm not there. I'm off center. Is that it? Is that it? That's it. Now I'm the same on both sides. I'm just gonna make a pencil mark. So just grab a pencil, put a little mark right here. Okay. And then from that mark, I'm gonna go across the other way and find the center. So I know that's the center one way. And then I'm gonna center it up here. And this will be my actual center. So I'll make a darker mark. So there's my actual center. Now, you have other ways of doing that, but I just think that's a quick, easy way. Now, the pokey tool. And you can use whichever one you got. I'm going to use my old pokey tool so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go right to that hole, and I'm going to poke a hole. Twirl it around first, and then stick this guy through there. See how he came out the back? This is where I'm going to feed my um, little twine through. You can make the hole as big as you want. We're going to cover it up and everything, so it'll be fine. This is why I didn't tie a knot. I want to feed both of those through there before I tie a knot, and then it will be in there. All right, so now I'm going to feed these through. I would suggest using dental threaders here if you've got any, but I just used my bake, my little pokey tool, laid it down, and pushed them through, and it works fine. All right, so now I decide how long I want my tassel to be. I think something like that, because I still want this to go into an envelope. And then back here, I think I'm just going to tie a knot right here. You could just tape it, whatever. Whatever feels good to you. I'm gonna tie a little knot. I'm gonna pop this up with a little foam so this knot's not gonna get in the way. So there's my knot. And I can cut this off. It's not going anywhere. Although, if you're afraid the person who gets it might tug on it, you know, might pull a little bit on your little tassel, they might stick a little tape back there just in case. Just do it like that. That way, if somebody goes, oh, how cute, and they pull on it, it won't come out the hole. All right, so there's that. Now we need something right there, right? We need something to cover that little spot up. Lots of options. You can use um, a brad would be super cute right there. You could use a little circle punch. We did that last year. I have cut these little stars, and I just think that might be cute right there, just to be a little something different. I think I'm going to put that star there. So let me glue it down. You can do anything you want. I just wanted to do something a little different right there. I'm going to use stars on the inside too. So I thought this would be a cute way to bring the star out here. Stars remind me of graduation. And I know that mortar boards wouldn't have a little star up there, although they should think about that because it'd be super cute, right? But it's your, mortar, it's your mortar board. You can do what you want. All right, let's bring our card back over. It's up here. And this now will get stuck down here, and that will be our little 
mortar board. And I'm going to do that with some foam, a foam tape. Let's get us some Scotty. You don't have to pop this up. I just think it'll be cute popped up and give a little bit of dimension there on the front since it's a little bit flat. Another thing that might be cute to do is to emboss your um, mortar board. Maybe emboss it with, you know, an embossing folder. Just an idea. Maybe with one, if you've got one that looks like fabric or leather or something like that, that might be pretty. And again, I'm putting more foam than I really need because in case the person, you know, tugs on the little tassel. All right, pokey tool. Peel this off. All right, and now this goes on the front of our card. I'm gonna hold it up because of that mechanism. You might wanna decorate the front before you put your mechanism in. It's an idea. Get that on there good and straight. That's cute, our little mortar board and our tassel. You can make your tassel longer if you wanted, but I just thought I'd do it this way. Now for the inside, which is probably my favorite part. Okay, this little piece, let me tell you where we need to score it. You're, I've already scored this piece for me, but you're gonna score this piece at one and three quarters, three and a half, and five and one quarter. That's where you'll score it, okay? Now then, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate it before I put it into the cart. I think it'll be easier. The first thing I'm gonna do to decorate is I'm going to lay these little guys out and glue them on, okay? I like the glitter. I thought it'd be cute to add a little glitter, a little pop of something in there. So I'm just going to glue this down. And I cut these pieces so I'd have a little border all the way inside that little red square. You'll see when I get these all glued down. This is a uh, Brutus Monroe glitter paper. I don't know if we have any more of this in stock. Um, if we do, we'll link it below. I'm pretty sure he discontinued this particular pack. Um, I'm not 100%, but I think it's retired. I'll have to check and see. If we have any, though, we'll link it for you guys. Okay, now I want to put that aside, and I want to go to my circles. Now, you can decide what you want to put in your circles. You could put, like, um, what would be a word you could put, like, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put the year, I'm going to put 2019, but like my son, his name is Thomas and we call him T-Man. I could totally put T-Man on here or you could think of a, I don't know. You guys tell me in the comments below four letters, four spaces. What would you put in a graduation card? Like I said, I'm going to do the year. So I'm going to my stamp set. This is called Alpha Bold. Let me put this behind it so you can see it. So this set is Alpha Bold and I'm going to use these numbers right down here. So I'm going to peel these off and get them ready to go. I'm going to use a little Nocturne ink, my Versaclair Nocturne, just for a good black ink there. And let's start with two. The year is typically what people put in, you know, typically. I'm just going to stamp this onto this little circle. And again, these are one-inch circles that I punched out earlier. So there's two. Now, for my numbers, I'm going to pop them up on some foam. So I'm just going to put some foam in here like this. And I'm just gonna use two on each one. The reason is this, I'm gonna add some art glitter glue on top of my foam as like an extra um, hold because I'm putting this on glitter. So two of these will be okay. Tell me in the comments, does it drive you insane that I bounce around over here that I don't stay in a straight line? I know, I know some of you guys have to be going, ah, go in a straight line. Okay, let's peel the backers off. So there's my two. I'm gonna put a dot of glue on each one of these just as extra. And then this little guy's gonna go right in the middle or as close to it as my eyeballing will do. So I've already punched some stars here, but I wanted to show you, this is a one inch punch. We have this in the store. It comes in a two pack. You get the heart and the star with it. So we'll link that for you guys, but I want to punch some little silver ones. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six gold and three um, silver. So let's make that six. I may not use them all, but that way we'll have plenty. These are super cute. And what I want to do is just put these all around. The only thing I have to be mindful of, and I want them to hang off the edge and everything, is that this can still close. So see how I avoided the little, the crease? You do have to avoid the little crease, but I think we can get them around in enough places that it'll kind of look like, like a party um, and it will avoid all the little creases. I'm going to get right to the creases. I am going to do that and glue these guys down all over the place. I think I want some more. <laughs> I think I want another gold up here. I may not. I'm going to lay it down and see if I do. 
Might want a gold one there. And I don't know, it may be overkill. It might be good the way I have it. We'll leave it alone. If it's not, we'll change it when we put it in the card. Okay, now back to our card. We have to decide at this point, what else do we want in here, right? What else do we want in our card? I'm gonna lay this down like this, as good as I can, and I think I'm gonna just cut myself a square here of paper and here, and then maybe do a stamp sentiment. I may do the stamp sentiment up here. Let me kind of decide. I really haven't gotten that far. I was pretty happy to get this far, so let me see what we're gonna do. So I dug into my stash, and I found some of this polka dot paper from a six by six pad from either last summer or two summers ago. I'll show you what it's called. You may have it in your stash. It's called Dots and Stripes. <clears throat> and this is really cute. Here's what I like about it. These are kind of the school colors for the girl that I'm giving this card to. So I thought this would be cool to um, kind of mimic those colors. And doesn't that look like a party in there? I think it does. So what I'm going to do is glue this straight down. Put that onto the card. And what I did was I just cut this so that I could get kind of a border all the way around. See how I've got that little um, eighth of an inch border? So this piece is three and three quarters wide by two and three quarters tall. But you can measure that spot. You might not get your little mechanism right in the center. And if you don't, just measure that spot and make the changes you need to. Um, and it won't look bad. I know we're not like matting up into that point and everything. But honestly, when this is done and the mechanism is all set, the little piece that pops up that has the year on it is going to be what we see. All right. So there's that part of the card. Now I want to do another thing. So I'm going to do a little more stamping and I'm even going to do some die cutting. So... I'm gonna stamp using my stamp set called Big Time Sayings. I'm gonna use the one that is Celebrate right here in this bottom corner. I love that one for graduation cards. I wore it out last year. I consider doing this in red, but I don't have a red that would be a perfect exact match. So to be safe, I'm just gonna stick with the black. It'll look good. But if you have the colors of ink that are, you know, exact match matches for what you want, be sure to use those too. I'm going to do it with this black stamp this here on my page. Notice how I'm leaving this here and I'm, I'm gonna slide this so you can see it. <clears throat> I'm leaving that there and I'm pressing and pressing. These are bold image stamps. You wanna let that ink transfer. That looks beautiful. Now to the cuddle bug. Okay, so I've got my cuddle bug. I'm gonna use an A plate, a magnetic and B plate. That's what those two are right there. And then I'm gonna place my paper down like so. Put this guy over, celebrate, so I can cut this out. This is one of our stamp sets that does have a die set to it. And then I'm going to feed this through and cut it out. If you have a lot of graduation cards to make, you might consider doing a bunch of those at one time, but that works perfect for me. I do have several to make, though. I have three that I can think of offhand. Okay, now this guy is gonna get dimension as well, and I'm gonna pop it up right here in the back of this card. So let me put some foam on the back of this. I'm just gonna stick that in there on the top. I think that will be cute on top of our little number. And then I'm gonna put a little sentiment down here. This little piece here is two by three, and I'm gonna stamp it to say, you deserve it. And I'm just gonna do that up here kind of on an angle. So it'll say, celebrate, you deserve it. And then it's a place for you to sign in this little spot, and you can also add a note to the back. Don't be ashamed to do that. You know, you can add notes all over the place. And because this is gonna be something I write on, I'm gonna put it down flat. So instead, no foam here, just gonna glue this one straight down with some art glitter glue. And I'm gonna do it on a little messy angle because I feel like the whole card is kind of angular-like. And now you're thinking, but when are you putting the little piece in? We're gonna do it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna push this down like this and I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay, you're gonna put glue on the top of one corner, okay, above the score line, and on the bottom of the other, above, below the score line. So watch, I'm gonna put some glue here, and I'm gonna take my little piece, and I'm gonna line it up. Now, I made it so you could line it up exact. You don't even have to think about it. Just line that up and glue that down. I'm gonna hold that in place for just a second, all right? And then under this one, I'm gonna do the top above the score line, and then I'm gonna hold that one down so it can dry for just a second. Now, I had popped those down, right? So I wanted to pop those back up and I'm gonna get my mechanism working and I just have to get it all folded like it goes, which is like that, okay? So you want these two pieces folded up, these two folded out, 
and stuck to those corners. And now when you close it, everything should just twist over and go inside. Now this is a thick, thick card, okay? So you might wanna make a box envelope for it. And you could also just hand deliver this, but I'll show you how to make a box for it as well. Okay, so to make the envelope, this is what you will need. This piece is five and three quarters by nine and three quarters, okay? And here's where we're gonna score. We are gonna score at half an inch on one end, all the way down, and then we'll score at four and five eighths. I hate giving you eights, I know, but when we're making an envelope, we have to have that tiny bit of ease, so we do have to do that. Then I need you to score at five and one eighth. If your scoreboard is marked, this is not a problem. So five and one eighth, and then you're gonna score at nine and one quarter. So that's the, the um, body of the box, okay? Now I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna score it at half an inch, just like we started a while ago. So a half an inch here, whoops, I slid. Let's go back, half an inch. And then we're gonna score at four and three quarters, which is right here, and then five and one fourth, right here. Okay, now we're gonna have to get rid of some pieces we don't need. Now, I'm gonna use my marker to show you at first, okay? You don't need this section here, all right? You don't need any of this section. I'm gonna do it like this. Any of this section like so, okay? This is gonna be the flap that folds into the box. At the bottom, you really don't need these little flap pieces, but if you wanna use a flap, you can. So if that's the case, you're gonna take off one little square here, and then we're just gonna notch these guys. So let's start cutting. You might be wondering why I changed my scissors for the bottom. My big long scissors will sometimes tear a tiny bit whenever I close them down, and I didn't want that to happen. Okay, so now we're going to crease all of our fold lines. So I'm just gonna fold and crease and then fold and crease. I'm just lining it up along the bottom to make sure I've got it pretty straight. I'm gonna bring this guy over here, like so. Now I'm gonna tell you, if you put it in an envelope like this, you will be able to mail it, but it's gonna be considered a package. So you're gonna have to pay the package price for this. You won't be able to do this as a letter or as a card or anything like that. It will be considered a little package. And it's probably gonna be an odd size, for the post office, so it might be a little more expensive to mail. But if you're gonna deliver this, if you're going to a graduation party or something, this is, you know, a great solution. All right, so there is that, and let's do the top. And I tell you what, before I fold that last little bit, and get that decrease down real quick, I want to use my corner rounder up here. This is the piece that's gonna go in to the flap, so I'm gonna corner round this really quick. Well, it's not wanting to go in there, so let me do it down like that. There, I'll fold that flat behind. So there's one end corner, uh, corner round, and let's do the other end. Do the same thing over here, get this guy out of my way. Fold that down, okay? So that'll help the box close a little better. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this flap down, and I'm gonna bring this flap over to it and seal it. You can do this with sticky tape. I'm just gonna use Mark Glitter Glue here. And again, I'm just gonna lay that down and seal it, just like so. Then at the bottom, I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time, you know those little flaps I said you didn't really have to keep? I'm gonna tuck those in, just because we've got them. And I wanna be mindful of where the front and the back of the box is, so I'm gonna close this piece forward and bring this piece back, because this is the back of the box here. So I'm gonna put some glue here. And this time, when I get this closed down and sealed together like this, I'm gonna stand this up, turn it where I can get to it, and I'm gonna take my bone folder and put it inside of it and smash that down. So just run your bone folder in and let that glue catch. So you can see why you could certainly use your sticky tape here, because it, it might be quicker depending on the glue you use, but the art glitter glue is gonna catch pretty fast. Okay, so now I didn't fold this flap, I need to. Just fold that just a little bit and get it going. 
that's going to close in like this and that will become our box. And what you might want to do is have yourself a little sticker here or something if you're giving this in person or what have you. You could make a little thumb mark with your hole punch. I'll show you what I mean. You could take a hole punch, place it inside like this. This one might be a little bit too wide, but we're going to, oh, I've got it closed. It helps if I open it. Place this in like this and just do kind of a half moon punch like that. Then we put my stopper topper back in before my glue dries out. Then you bring your card over and you put it inside and you just carefully place that in. Put a little tassel in there. Tassel was worth the hassle, right? You put that inside and then close this down. Again, I would probably, well, I know for sure if I was sending this in the mail, I would put a little piece of tape here or something and seal that down. But if you're giving this in person, look, there you go. It's a little box and you can write to and from on the front. Be super cute. And when the recipient gets it, they can open the box and pull out the card. And there's their little tassel. And there's their, wow, celebrate. You deserve it. Isn't this cute? I love this card. This is a cute one. I'm really glad that I did it. Now, it is a make a fuss card. It is not quick. It is not. Um, it's easy. It's super easy. Even the box is super easy. But it is a make a fuss card. You do have to work on it pretty good. But once you get it done, it's really, really, it's really worth the hassle. Get it? Ha ha. I know I'm cheesy. So there is my 2019 graduation card. I hope you guys like it. I love how that looks. And I like the box. I wasn't even thinking about doing a box um, for the envelope today, but it worked out perfect. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. Again, remember all the um, dimensions and everything that I used for this card will be in the blog post that we link below. Be sure to subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell. I showed you guys how to do that to make sure that you're getting notifications. And if you've got a loved one graduating and you make a card like this, I want to see it. You can show me on my customer gallery or because May is for making and that is our promotion we're doing this month. You can link this in our link party, which is going to be also linked in the description below. Our May is for making blog post where you can go link a picture of what you're making. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Can't wait to see what you guys do with this idea. Until next time. Bye-bye.